Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Historic Challenges here on MotoGP 20. So obviously as we always do we need to check out the Historic Market and see what's on there. It's going to be quite expensive today, we've got three rare items. We've got Nicky Hayden 2006, Alex Crivier 1999 and Valentino Rossi's Honda team from 2001. All of them obviously being rare. So the lowest one we're going to buy here is 7,000. So I actually might take quite a few credits off us here. We're, not actually, we're actually going to have a net loss of... Uh, these diamonds over this episode. So 7,900 for Crivier, ouch, 7,500 for Nicky, and 7,000 for Rossi there, which takes us down to 16,300. So uh, we might actually not be able to buy everything later if two ultra rares come up. We actually won't be able to afford to buy all three things. So hopefully it's not too expensive, but obviously we're getting to the point now where everything is pretty rare. So we got Crivier appear on one of the ones a very very long time ago like a lot long long time ago and we couldn't afford him so he's finally actually come back around again so we finally got Alex Crivier here so the difficult challenge today is at Hereth obviously the last time we did a four stroke challenge we played as Chris Vermeulen at Qatar so we've got pretty much everyone to play with now now if I remember correctly someone asked me to play as Max Biaggi 2004 so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna play as Max Biaggi I'm probably not gonna get through all the requests sorry about that because there's probably not going to be enough episodes for me to do all the requests. I know uh, Biaggi, someone wanted me to play as Biaggi, someone wants me to play as Kenny Roberts Jr. So the reason why I'm not playing as Jr. now is that if then I get a 500cc challenge, I can probably play as him then as well. Because usually I can't do the requests from there, because most people ask for four strokes riders. I know obviously Biaggi's also in there, but they asked specifically for Biaggi 2004, so that's what I'm going to do. So we'll play as Biaggi 2004 today. Another wet weather race that could be potentially quite interesting could play in our favor quite a bit at Haref as well so let's get this started so we're down here on the grid then at Haref Shinya Nakano on pole position once again so it's obviously back to this old grid Toru Okawa in second and then is it Max Biaggi in third place I think it might be unless it is Barros uh, but we'll put a medium rear obviously we can actually change the fuel on this bike if I'm not mistaken since it is, although it's from the 990 era, so it might not be able to change it, I'm not 100% sure. We've got the Austin Powers 2003 Rossi then on the grid with us there, and then there's ourselves as Max Biaggi in 6th position. So then, enough messing around, let's get this race started, and hopefully there's no 1000s in this race to absolutely blast past everyone. Alright, so I've got a quick scan of the grid there, Stoner is on his 2012 bike, so we've got to watch out for Casey Stoner coming through the order potentially, but waiting for the lights to go out here in Hareth. Lights out and away we go, off the start. Oh, big wheelie there, so we're not quite managed to pull alongside Vantino as we go towards the first corner. Hitting the brakes, there goes Sete around the outside. We've gone in a bit hot, we've been hit by Capi Rex there. Capa Rossi's hit us, and then Burns got in my way on the exit, so we're actually down to 8th place now. But obviously we've got plenty of time to try and make our way back through. Just been hit by Bayliss as well, and then Capa Rossi again. All the Ducatis trying to hit me there, we're back past Lorenzo. Lorenzo got the inside temporarily there. So it's been a terrible getaway down to ninth place. We're going to have to try and get the heat through these tyres as quick as we can. So as you can see, they are freezing in the bottom right-hand corner there. Davizioso is now coming at the inside. Davizioso has already passed us there through the Cito Pons corner. So we are absolutely going backwards here in this race. So we hit the brakes for the hairpin then. Oh, no. We absolutely smashed Biaggi. Oh, and I think we've collected Rossi there as well. Oh, that has been a horrendous accident. I don't think we actually quite got Rossi there. I think he got away with it. Totally misjudged my break in there into the Danny Pedrosa corner. Hopefully we won't do that this time. Lights down, away we go. I think we've got a slightly better start, maybe. Getting off the throttle. So up into fifth place as we approach the first corner. We've passed Rossi this time, then. As we go into the first corner, Malandri's still on the inside. There's a crash behind. Kenny Roberts Jr. has gone down. We're looking behind to see who's been collected in there. I think a Ducati's down with him as well. Here comes Malandri still up the inside. So Malandri's just overtaken. Well, it's actually not under yellow flags, is it? It'll be the corner before. It's under the yellow flags. I was going to say, Melanji would have overtaken under yellow flags. Otherwise, obviously, the, it was just the first corner's yellow flag still. So, we're still in sixth position. We overtook Rossi. We lost the place to Melanji. But now we're back in front of Marco. As we go a bit wide to Cito Ponzo. It's going to allow him back through. Is that going to allow Antino back through? Though we're back on the power nice and early. Bike trying to wheelie hit. I think I'm going to go over to the inside. Lorenzo's now there behind us. On his Yamaha. On the brakes then. For this Danny Pedrosa corner, we've sat Marco Melangi up there. I didn't want to hit him. 
which I've managed to not hit him, but he seems to have still set up anyway, regardless. So Lorenzo's now got past him as a crash. Toro Car oh, Toro Car in front of us has gone down. I was looking behind us, but Toro Car, of course, he's in front. He just washed out the front there, I believe. Well, I can't believe I actually missed that. He was right ahead of us. So I was just looking at uh, Melandri losing position to Lorenzo. We've gone in two wides. And Helnieta, that's going to allow Lorenzo up the inside, surely. Yes, it is. Although we're still holding it around the outside. We keep in front of Jorge Lorenzo now, then. So Dajiro Kato ahead of us, then it's Shinya Nakano, and then... Oh, Lorenzo has now come through, so it's Lorenzo we've got to deal with first. But then, obviously, in the lead, then it is Alex Barros. So actually, Japanese riders in positions 2 and 3. They were actually 2, 3, 4, weren't they, before Okawa fell off. But we've just gone so wide into the Lorenzo corner. Oh, we've hit Burn. Oh, I think we absolutely had Burn off there. Burn dived up the inside. Well, he went up the inside of me. I didn't even see him until I was coming back to my racing line. It's a bit too late. So we've just had an absolute massive crash with Burn there. It's the bit it, it's just crashed. Oh no, Dovi. So that one was better, but it's still still terrible. We still only did a lap then. So we're waiting for the lights to go lights on. Away we go. Again, try and get off to a good start and get past Rossi if we can. So we go towards the first corner. We've got the run on Rossi. We're past him. Now he's back in front of us again. They were breaking quite early. There's a crash behind. Melandri's crashed this time, which I'm not surprised about. The, the amount of dive bombs he's trying to go for turn one. He did actually clip me, but luckily we didn't crash. As we go into Mitchell and Cornell in the rear, stepping out, we're back down to 10th place. We're behind Lorenzo, we're behind Burn, we're behind Caparossi. So it's been a much worse start again, but we're back past Lorenzo. Well, Lorenzo just hit us at the back, so that's probably going to have affected him a bit. Dovi's now gone past Lorenzo because of that. So be it Burn trying to go around the outside. I nearly called him Biaggi, but then I'm playing as Biaggi. So, oh! So we're having another go then. We're waiting for the lights to go out here. All right, so and away we go. That was a really silly crash, just crashing into Caparossi there. I need to just stop crashing into the AI. Although they need to stop crashing into me likewise. But we've had a better start this time as we go into the first corner then. So we've not been dive bombed by Melandri. We're at the inside of Nakano, but we haven't been able to get the power down and get past him. That's why I'm losing all the positions. I can't get the rear, the bike stopped because it's so cold. So I need to probably brake a little bit earlier than I would normally. We're looking at the inside of Nakano. We're straight past Nakano then, so we're up into third place already. Then it's Ukawa and Barros in front of us. So those 2002 Hondas always doing pretty well at the starts of these races. Probably because they both start on the front row, but then Kato usually comes through. So the 2002 Honda, well, it was an excellent bike back in its day, so I suppose that's why. So in the slipstream then of Ukawa, we're going to attack him into the Danny Pedrosa corner. Up the inside we go. We're closing up on Barros, but not enough to make a move, I don't think. Ukawa's still trying to hang around the outside, but we've kept the position. So up into second place. So this one has been much better. Stoner's up to 14th, I think, already. Rossi's down to 15th. There's been a crash behind. Ukawa's crash at that corner again. So Ukawa keeps washing the front out at that corner. So perhaps that's just a thing with the AI, or maybe his AI, I don't know. But it's uh, Barros, and then followed by Biaggi. Oh, Burn. So it's actually B's in the top three then. So Barros, Biaggi, and Burn, top three positions. I was not expecting Burn to be behind me when I look behind. I must say, his AI seems to be pretty good in the wet, actually. But Barros, Barros is fantastic in the wet. He's clearing off here. So Barros leads the race then by seven tenths of a second. But we're closing up into the first corner. Hopefully the rear end will stop. Yes, it did. So once, when it does stop, we actually have pretty good performance. So Stoner is climbing through the order, I can see. He's up to 12th place now. So towards the line then at the end of the second lap. Barros is really clearing off now. Fastest lap to him. He's now a second ahead of us. So we're about to start the fourth lap. Fastest lap to me. We're back down to seven tenths behind Barros. So we are making some inroads on him now. My rear tyre is up to temperature and I can stop the bike a bit better. We are really closing on him actually. Through Cesar Pond's corner then. We've got the drive. As we go down the straight towards the Danny Pedrosa corner. Well, are we going to be able to make a move on Alex Barros here for the lead? Up the inside we go on the brakes. Yes we can. That was an easy move actually. He's got in a bit hot himself actually as well. Which makes it even easier. So on lap four, then we take the lead here at Jerez. So over the line at the end of that lap, another fastest lap to me. Now eight tenths in the lead. So we've basically gone from seven tenths behind to eight tenths in front. Then that's one and a half seconds. So then over the line once again. We're now a second in the lead of Barros, but Burn is very, very close to him. So Burn actually maybe be able to take Barros, but us three are so far in front of everybody else. Starting the seventh lap, then 142.4 for myself. Only eight tenths in front of Barros now. So Barros is hunting us back down. Oh, Sete's down. Sete Gibbonau's now down as well. And Stoner. So, I mean, Stoner wasn't really actually gaining through the pack anymore anyway. I wasn't worried by him, but he's definitely out of the picture now. It seems like the 1,000 
It hasn't got a massive advantage at this track, I suppose it's not got that many straights on it. And here comes Barros, a wittering away about Casey Stoner crashing, and Barros is trying to overtake us, and in fact he's about to, through the last corner then, oh, I'm trying to get back on the power around the outside of Barros. Obviously I'm running power mode zero, because I was really, really marginal on fuel. In fact, I was actually about a lap under. I've been using one the whole race, but now we're only a tenth in the lead, 143-2 on that lap, so we really slowed down the rear slide through the first corner. Here comes Barros, Barros is through, but we're still hanging around the outside, massive wheelie. We retake the lead from Alex Barros, but it's only going to be a matter of time now before he definitely takes it for good. I need to get the heat back of this tyre. The rear spinning up through this Cito Pons corner then, the Cito Pons bike. Actually, it's two Cito Pons bikes versus each other. We hit the brakes then for Danny Pedrosa corner the front really feels bad as well look how cold both the tyres are they managed to cool down since it's like cruising at the front so into the last corner then once again is Barros going to be able to have an attack no this time we can actually get the rear stopped a little bit more you can see the right hand side is actually too hot and again look how marginal we are on fuel 1.2 laps of fuel this bike is using up so much fuel even in power mode 1 so I'm going to have to definitely use power mode zero for the rest of this lap, which could definitely be a hindrance to us. Loris Caparossi crashes then. It's Barros looking for a move. No, we're only inside then. So I'll go defensive. Barros nearly hits us off the back. Barros almost hits us there. That could give us valuable time over him. Hitting the brakes for Pedrosa corner. We've got him wide into Pedrosa corner there. Is that going to allow him? But the inside, I'm just going to go full thrust out the corner just to try and get the bike to go. The bike trying to wheelie as we go through turn seven. The rear again is absolutely gone. No heat, no grip, nothing left. Barros is all over the back of his head to the Aspar corner, trying to get on the power, trying to feather the throttle a little bit. I need to have a mixture of power and stability. There's a crash behind Jorge Lorenzo. Always seems like there's a crash when we're around this part of the circuit. The last few laps there, six tenths of a second ahead of Barros. That might be enough, but he gained on us quite a bit through this section last time. Into Alex Crivier. We've run a bit wide through Alex Crivier, but it's not too bad as we go towards Ferrari corner. And we've got a bit of a gap as we go to Jorge Lorenzo then. Oh, the rear doesn't want to stop. The front doesn't want to stop. Is that going to allow Barros on the inside? No, it's not. So out the last corner then. We are going to win here. And Burn actually almost got caught up by someone if you look behind. But we are going to win here at Jerez in the rain. As Max Biaggi 2004 aboard the Camel Honda. So then at the end of that race we were six tenths ahead of Barros. So actually it wasn't two tenths at the end I suppose in terms of the gap. But he was definitely trying to attack us. It was his mistake into Michelin. And I think actually gave us the victory. We just had that little bit over him. But interestingly enough, we actually did have the fastest lap. It doesn't look like it's stolen it off us by like any uh, random AI riders, which is quite uncommon now. So the simulation did, uh, did actually seem to work properly in this race with the simulated times. Shane Byrne, third place. He's the standout for me. And Nakano, fourth. None of the guys should actually expect to be near the front or near the front. Casey Stoner ended up 16th. Lorenzo, 18th. Rossi, 19th. And obviously Ukawa retired. So actually all the guys that crashed there, Stoner, Caparossi, Lorenzo, Rossi and Ukawa right at the bottom. Iron Jiven as well, so everyone 15th downwards crashed. So we'll have a look at some of those crashes and uh, then we'll head into the historic menu. So on board with Ukawa then, through this corner, gets on the power, massive high side. You can see the body's glitching, I think the frame rate is a little bit broken in the wet. I must say it's one of my gripes with this game about how poorly optimised it is. It's not really any visually, you know, it's not massively better than 19 and it's a lot... It lags a lot more. But there you go, through this corner, Ukara on the power, massive high side, that's probably what he did the other times as well, and that's him out of the race, his own fault. I thought he'd wash the front, actually, that's usually how you crash to that corner, or you do what I did in career mode and get on the grass. But uh, you very, very rarely high side from it, I would find. On board with Rossi then, and it's going to be the same crash, yep, on the power in the middle of that corner, massive high side. But he did get back on. So once again, slowing it down, you can see the rear just starts to come around as he gets on the power. Massive high side, and we get the glitchy body that doesn't really know what to do again. So it's on board with Jivenau then. Stoner right in front of him. Jivenau just hits him up the back in the middle of that corner. He gets back on the power on the exit of the corner. Stoner again going slow, and he just hits him on the back, and they both go sliding off. So a different crash from us. Whoa, Stoner's bike really went cartwheeling in there. So obviously they've already had contact once, but it's the second contact we're interested in. It just looks like Stoner's just going really slow on the racing line and Jibinau doesn't really back out or anything, just hits him up the back. We've seen it many times in career mode, that's exact same crash really. So this is on board with Caparossi then, into Lorenzo's corner, Lorenzo loses the rear, Caparossi goes into him and gets hit by Vermeulen and then he gets hit by Pedrosa as well. Poor Caparossi. 
So if we slow it down then, because it's a lot to deal with. Lorenzo almost high sides in front, so that so that makes him have to slow up. Caprossi hits into him, which almost causes him to high side. And then he gets hit the rest of the way around by Vermeulen. And that's him down then. And then on board with Lorenzo. Looks like it's going to be the same crash as Ukara and Rossi. Yes, it is. Get on the power. Massive high side. I suppose this is more likely to happen in the wet. But you can see going through the corner, they get on the gas. They must get full on the gas through there. But you want to build it up a little bit. And that's obviously why the AI crash. I guess it's programmed in so that they make human-like errors to get on the gas too much and crash. Otherwise, it'd be a bit boring if they did it properly every time. So we get our 15,000 diamonds, which brings us up to 31,300. So hopefully... There's not too ex too much expensive stuff on the market here. And actually, three on commons is not too bad, I suppose. So we'll get Max Pledge 2001, we'll get Troy Bayless 2006, and we'll get the Repsol Honda from 1999. That takes us down to 23,100 diamonds. So obviously, only six riders to go, only six teams to go as well. So you'd say that's two more episodes, but you've got to remember that there are two ultra rares. Valentino Rossi, I can't remember which year, I think 2009, and I think Casey Stone in 2007. And they are 15,000 diamonds each. Some, like, around that value. They might be a slightly more, might be slightly less. I can't remember. But that's an insane amount of diamonds. And obviously only having 23,000 right now would mean that if they came up before we did the challenge next episode, I wouldn't be able to get both of them. So that'd be uh, obviously quite interesting. I mean, they'll obviously come basically straight back up on the market again because there's not really many more riders and teams for me to get. But if they do come up on the market, I'll probably have to seize the opportunity and get them. Although I suppose I know that they have to come back up later on, because obviously it only gives you rides you haven't got. So the Ultra Rare, you might not see that till right at the end. I haven't seen them yet, I just know how much they cost from being told, and also in the game files that's in there, how much each rider should cost around about. So I hope you did enjoy that one. A bit more of a battle this time. I thought I was just going to clear off after I overtook Barros, but then he started to catch me up again. So it made it quite a tense finale there. So I hope you did enjoy that. I managed to just hang on ahead of him. So one Honda Pons beats the other. And Burn in third still surprises me. I don't know how he managed that. He did a pretty good job on that, uh, that Aprilia cube. I suppose the, uh, the wet balanced it out a little bit. But like I said, I hope you did enjoy that video. Hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. Hope you're all staying safe. And I shall see you in the next one.